Hey guys, I'm Link there, and I'm here to talk to you about my favourite team in Season 1 Grand Champions of the Overwatch League, London Spitfire. We're going to talk through what we can expect moving into the 2019 season and what moves they made in the offseason that may make a difference. So, as has become a theme for me, I'm going to start off with the main tank. Gesture, the big boy, best wrestler in the world, best Winston in, in the world. I'm not biased at all, but... A bit of a shaky Ryan, apparently. He only bought it out once during the Grand Finals against Philadelphia Fusion at the Barclays Center. And uh, that was on King's Row to try and run some kind of 3-3 composition. It was sort of in its progenitor days then. It was a little bit unrefined. Had Moira in it as well, rather than the Zen we've come to know today for various reasons. But the question is, moving into a 2019 season where we could expect a significant amount of 3-3 play to pop up in a far more refined version... Is Jesh's Ryan up to the task? Because Reinhardt is the linchpin around which all of the 3-3 composition sort of hangs in the balance. If you lose your Reinhardt or your Reinhardt isn't able to do enough damage, isn't aggressive enough, can't farm these Earth Shadows, then your 3-3 can be incredibly weak. Gesture? How is his Ryan? It's been a pretty long 6-5 month off season and we do know that Gesture is a hard grinder, so in my personal personal opinion, these guys will have been watching the meta, they will know that 3-3 is a thing, they're not going to have let Gesture neglect the opportunity to really grind out on that Rhine and try and improve it. I imagine there's been a lot of hard grinding from Gesture to improve his Reinhardt, and it's obvious that through his Orisa and through his Winston that Gesture has a deep and almost unparalleled understanding of how tanks should work in Overwatch, and I don't think he's going to have any problem really attaching that knowledge to a Reinhardt, but it remains to be seen. And in a 3-3 composition, London Spitfire could fall short potentially if Spitfire's Rhine in gesture is not up to the task. But of course, when it comes to adapting to new compositions, new metas, new heroes, is all about the coaching staff, and London Spirit 5 had a little bit of a change up in the back room. They've lost Chang Goon, who I believe has gone over to Seoul Dynasty, and they've picked up Coach 815, previously of MVP Space. The man hasn't claimed a title with a team during Overwatch, as far as I'm aware, but he does have over 11 years coaching experience, and while he may not have claimed a title, you can assume that London, being backed by Cloud9 and being Season 1 winners, had a considerable they had a considerable amount of both resources and clout when looking for a coach. And they must have had quite a few to choose from. And I imagine they've seen something very special in Coach 815 to have picked him to be their leader. However, Lone Spitfire will be retaining the backroom services of both Agape and Jfield, which is incredibly important because the players have built up a trust with those two over the course of the season. They will continue to really harbor that trust as they get used to Coach 815 as well, and this will help reinforce Coach 815's authority in the team when he has the backing of these coaches who know the players very well and obviously have the players' respect. So it's a good job they've held on to quite a bit of their coaching staff, which have taken them to that previous championship victory. And also, just having one change out of the three does mean that there will be quite a bit that the players can rely on in terms of familiarity in the back room. Okay, looking to other changes, there has been a DPS pickup for London Spitfire. They've recruited Guard, previous alumni of Element Mystic. And he's a pretty uh, he's a pretty handy hitscan DPS. I've commentated on him a few times, and he was always impressive on both the Widowmaker and the Sombra. And importantly, he can fit in to substitute for either Prophet or Bird Ring in for London Spitfire, because both of them play to a very high standard both projectile and hit scan heroes. So you can take either out, place the other on projectile if need be, and have guard sub in. Of course, this wouldn't work in a double projectile meta, but we don't have one of those at the moment as far as I'm aware. So I imagine this will be quite a fortuitous pickup. One of the reasons that this pickup is so important is because of bird rings, let's say consistency issues, and a wrist about as strong as a gingerbread house. So he is seemingly a little bit injury prone and prone to fall offs in terms of performance. And this does mean that if Spitfire do experience bird ring having another slump like he had early in the playoffs fall in the Spitfire, that they can bring in guard to replace bird ring while bird ring gets back on track. And of course, it can also happen to profit. He too can be injured or have slumps. It just hasn't been so, uh, outright yet to see Prophet have any sort of problems. He's been a very consistent member of the London Spitfire roster. What very much excites me about this pickup, however, is the potential for a Tracer Sombra dive as played by Prophet and Guard. 
Profit and Jesha together on their Tresor and Winston basically redefined how we think about dive compositions. And Fury, I will unbiasedly say, is the best diva in the world. I think it would be a valuable asset to that as well. Of course, Bird Ring is also waiting in the wings to bring out again. She should be required, or he could even play the Sombra himself or the Tracer if Profit seems to be underperforming. At any rate, with these three DPS, you will always have viable dive DPS alongside some of the best tanks in the world to make that work. Guard, however, was not the only pickup the London Smith I went after. They also picked up Flex Support Krillin, previously of Crusher Gaming in South Korean Trials Season 1. They came dead last. They won two maps, lost 26, and they even went up against Coach 815's previous team, MVP Space, and got summarily spanked. But let's think about this. This is London Spitfire. Championship winners, Cloud9 backing, they have the money to bid for whoever they want, they have the clout to get whoever they wish to on their team, so in trials, there must have been something very impressive about Krillin to make that pickup happen, or potentially Coach815 may have noticed something during MVP Space's match against Crusher Gaming to see... This guy's got something special, and I believe that Krillin probably is going to live up to that. Why else would he be on the number one team in the world right now? And also, adding this player to the roster does mean that if Bedoshin or Nuss get ill, they can be effectively substituted, something that Spitfire very much need to keep in mind. And also, it means potentially a dual flex support uh, composition is available for Spitfire on maps such as Horizon Lunar Colony or Hanamura, where you can take advantage of long sightlines. And also, Krillin would be... Quite well matched for those because he's also displayed competitive mercy experience on Crusher Gaming. So should flexibility be needed and for Flex Boss to swap over to main, then Krillin can fill that role quite effectively. Though some pickups, they're conspicuous by their absence. We've seen London grapple with injury before with Birdring in later stages, and we saw how negatively that affected London's performance during those stages. So it's very strange to see if they haven't picked up a third roster member as a substitute for either of the tank players, Gesture or Fury. Both, we're going to be praying that they don't get ill and don't get injured. There are fewer games for each team to play this season, around only seven games per stage. But if one of them goes down, it could mean terrible things for London Spitfire. There's no viable substitute. They'd, they'd have to basically put in guard and hope he can tank, potentially. So we'll have to see whether that will be a very risky factor that pays off or cripples for London Spitfire. Finally, I'd like to talk about the potential for London Spitfire operating in several metas. Of course, we do know that 3-3 may well be coming, and I imagine in the first part of Stage 1 at least, we will see a lot of teams relying on that 3-3 composition. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Jester's Reinhardt could leave something to be desired, though I don't believe personally there will be too much of an issue given the longer offseason, and of course, there will have been a lot of thought at London Spitfire as to how to improve Gesture's Reinhardt and Coach 815 doubtless will have been trying to add that to Gesture's effective hero pool. And Gesture isn't really a bad Reinhardt, he's just serviceable, and serviceable doesn't really cut it when you're trying to go for number one in the Overwatch League. However, given the power of Gesture's Winston and Orisa, we could potentially see London Spitfire try and pioneer new metas or GOATS counters, considering that we will be moving into a live patch where Diva's a little bit less powerful due to a internal cooldown on her defense metric, meaning she can only raise it two seconds after having previously finished using such. And with Fury being a very good Diva, it could mean that, yeah, they can just try and punch through it with Fury on the Diva, but Fury's also got a lot of meta resistant off tank heroes in his pool. He also has a fantastic Rotog and a great Zarya to boot as well. So there's a lot of potential for potentially one of those pulled port compositions with the Arissa Hole and the Rotog hook to be the bread and butter of London Spitfire. And that could be a great boon for the Spitfire and that I imagine a lot of Overwatch League teams will have been scrimming with and against 3-3. It may well be that London could catch them by surprise if they've been scrimming according to their stage one uh, sort of playbook. And that's another thing that's very important for these teams as well. With 20 teams in the league, you're only going to face seven over the course of a stage. And that means you can very much plan your scrims so that the seven teams you go up against will never see your compositions coming. And that could work in Spitfire's favor if any backroom staff come up with something a little bit more inventive.
Overall, my belief is that London Spitfire will start the season strong, especially when no one's had time to scout out what potential comps they may well be using alongside having had some time to gel with the new backroom staff, the pre-established synergy of a team up against new expansion teams that haven't worked together so much before, and of course, the raw mechanical skill that these players do have. Moving on into later seasons, I do believe that Spitfire are greatly meta-resistant thanks to Fury and Gesture, basically being able to pick up any tanks they want and excel on them, and Profit and Birdering, both being able to play both hit scan and Projectile to a top tier degree. And also, they can sort of account for injuries with the substitutions of Krillin and Guard, respectively. I brought up earlier concerns regarding tank injuries, but, well, that's a risk that London Spitfire have taken. Maybe it will kneecap them, maybe it'll pay off, and they just won't have as much they have to worry about in terms of roster management. But I think it's going to be another strong season for Spitfire. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, and I will see you guys all next time.